Welcome. We are teaching the complete system of Hegel's philosophical or absolute science. Last time we discussed what is absolute science and how was it discovered. We gave a brief overview of the phenomenology of spirit and we surveyed Hegel's famous introduction to the phenomenology. <clears throat> Today, we will take up the phenomenology's first main division, A, consciousness, and watch how we make the transition to B, self-consciousness. A, consciousness. By consciousness, Hegel means consciousness of an other an independent object which would exist even if consciousness or a subject did not exist. An object or other, such as a sensuous this, perceptual thing, or conceptual force or law. In the experience that follows, all these objects will prove contradictory, and the result will be consciousness not of an other, but of consciousness itself, i.e. self-consciousness. What we witness here, a la Plato, is simply the birth of the universal, our first foray above the divided line and outside the cave of sense individuals into true reality and the intelligible world of the concept. So, as the science of appearing knowledge, we will start with the most elementary and immediate knowledge shape and watch how of itself it will gradually be transformed, ultimately, into true or absolute knowledge, the absolute concept. Hence, we begin the ascent to science with the knowledge Hegel calls sense certainty, or the this and meaning. Our main question will be, why does our experience of the object as a this, a unique individual, show the object to be in reality a not this, a universal. First, a summary. Immediate knowledge or sense certainty is just a knowledge of the immediate, the this here now, a unique individual. We then compare the concept of the object, the criterion or standard, with the object as experienced to see if they correspond. The concept or criterion being immediacy or pure being, i.e. an object as not mediated or containing differences, qualities, negation or relation to other things. Thus, the now is first night and then day. 9.01 a.m., then 9.02 a.m., and so on. What abides in all these differences or negations is the self-same now as universal, not the immediate individual now. It is the same with the here. Here is a tree, then a house, etc. Here also has a right, a left, a before, an after, and above, a below. What remains in all these different here's is the one universal here. Therefore, the this is not an immediate individual this, but in reality a mediated universal this, a sense or conditioned universal. This is the truth or what is. Now, 
a more detailed account of the dialectic, which has three moments. That of the object, since certainty claims its immediacy to lie in the object. That of the subject, its immediacy now lies in the subject. And that of the subject and object, its immediacy is now held to lie in the whole of sense certainty, or in pointing out. Before we begin, there are three points to make. <clears throat> in the opening paragraph, Hegel mentions the word object three times. Since we are doing a phenomenology, a study of the phenomenon of knowledge, by object, Hegel here means the knowledge itself that we are investigating, comprised of its two sides, the knowing or consciousness and its object, and not the object of knowing, such as this thing or force. Throughout the phenomenology, we will be dealing with a three-tiered structure, namely consciousness of consciousness of the object. The first consciousness is that of the phenomenologist or ourselves, the we. The second consciousness is that of the candidate, shape, gestalt, or knowledge we are currently investigating to see if it qualifies as genuine or absolute knowledge. In the second paragraph, we discover that while sense certainty seems initially to be the richest and truest knowledge, since there is no limit in space and time to the wealth the senses contain, and since nothing has yet been omitted from the object of sense, certainty's certainty is in fact quote, the most abstract and poorest truth for all it can say about the thing it knows and is certain of is it is. Sense certainty's truth, what it knows, is just the pure being or simple immediacy of the thing before it. And this is because it is an individual without any qualities or differences within it, and without any relations to other things. As mediation-free, it is purely immediate. It is further discovered that although the two sides of sense certainty, the I or knowing, and the object or this, are in fact mediated by each other, e.g., the I in sense certainty is through the object, and vice versa. Sense certainty insists that it is the object that alone is essential and immediate, while the I is unessential and mediated. Let's now see if this is true. If the object the this is really the essence and immediate, or rather the reverse. One, the dialectic of the object. The object, the this, of which I am certain, has two sides, the now and the here. First, the now. Is the now something immediate? If, as Hegel says, we answer the question, what is the now, with the now is night. And the next day, consider this answer, we'd have to say, the now is not night, but rather day. The now itself nevertheless remains and preserves itself through the vanishing or negation of night and day, etc., and is indifferent to what its contents are. Such a thing that exists and maintains itself through the negation of this and that, 
and is therefore mediated, Hegel calls a universal. Hence the now, the object of sense certainty, is not something immediate and individual, but rather something mediated and universal. The same is true of the being of the here. The here is now a tree. Then the here is a house, and then a lake, etc. The here that abides and remains through all the different contents or instances of the here, through being and equally not being a tree, a house, a lake, a here that is through negation through not being this or that, is again a universal here, something mediated and not immediate, hence essential, as asserted by sense certainty. But sense certainty will not give up. Being forced to abandon the object as the source of its certainty, its immediacy and its essence, it now turns to the subject and claims its certainty and immediacy to be found there, namely, in the immediacy of my seeing and hearing. As Hegel says, quote, sense certainty's truth is in the object as my object, or in its being mine. It is because I know it. Sense certainty, though expelled from the object, is not yet thereby overcome, but only driven back into the eye." End quote. Two, the dialectic of the subject. Thus, the certainty of what I know is now in the immediacy of my seeing it. I, this singular individual I, see the tree and assert that the here is a tree. However, another individual eye sees a house and asserts that the here is a house instead. Both have the same validation, the immediacy of seeing, but one truth vanishes in the other. What nevertheless remains is the I as universal, the I as a simple seeing, a seeing of neither the house or tree, and mediated by the negation of tree, house, etc. Hence the I, like now, here, or this, is merely universal, as language shows I may mean this individual singular I, but when I say I, I say what is universal. For everyone is I. Three, the dialectic of the subject and object. Forced out of the object, and now the subject, neither being the essential, since certainty retreats to its last stronghold, it puts the whole of sense certainty to the test as the essence of its immediacy. Thus, sense certainty now sticks firmly to one immediate relation. The now is day, since its I is now riveted to one immediate relation, unwilling to consider anything else, we will ask it to just please point out to us the now which you're immediately certain of. Thus the now is pointed to as this now. But this now has already ceased to be in the pointing out of it. It is a now that has been, has been present as a now of being, but now is past, is not. The now I am presently pointing to is another now 
than the now originally pointed to. So here again, we learn that the truth of sense certainty is not the immediate, the simple, the singular, but the universal, the universal now. The now, which is a plurality of nows, such as the hour or the day, which consists in many nows, hence is mediated by the negation of all the different nows, hence is indifferent to what they contain. The same is true of the specific individual here that is pointed to. It too is a manifold of here's, a universal, hence something mediated involving otherness, not immediate. The here pointed out has and above and the below or before and then after, a right and the left. Indeed, it is such as to include and encompass the entire universe. The last paragraphs of this first section make it crystal clear as to what Hegel's true opinion concerning the being of sense things is. For not only does he advise that, quote, those who assert the truth and certainty of the reality of sense objects should go back to the most elementary school of wisdom, of the Eleusinian mysteries, of the eating of bread and drinking of wine. But he also notes that even the animals are not as stupid as these sense realist metaphysicians and are profoundly initiated into this wisdom of the true nothingness of sensuous things." End quote. Sense certainty has thus been refuted, but we have a result and are now compelled to move on to the next truer candidate of genuine or absolute knowledge, which Hegel calls two, perception or the thing and deception.